Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Institute, and today I'm here to share with you a breath of springtime. With Christmas and Valentine's Day, red is everywhere. And as florists, we get so tired of red. And if you know me, you know I love red. But by the time Valentine's Day gets here, red isn't my favorite color. And I want to think of anything but red. And I start thinking about summery, warm weather, and the escape. Maybe you're thinking about it too. Maybe going to Hawaii, where protea grow, and pineapple. Or maybe you're thinking of the flower fields in California, where the beautiful ranunculus are blooming. But maybe you just need a sneak escape with flowers that brighten your day and make you feel warm and fuzzy all over. Springtime does bring us so many wonderful materials to work with. In addition to the protea and the ornamental pineapple, I've got some hydrangeas, the little mini green variety, some green trick carnation, a little bit of lisianthus, bachelor buttons, and a hyacinth. But my most favorite thing that I want to share with you, if you're a wedding florist, you've probably worked with stephanotis quite often. Did you know it grew on a vine? a long trailing vine. Now this one has no blooms, it's too cold, it's winter time. But later, little tendrils will come out, a new stem, and it'll add flowers. And they grow those little tiny stems of beautiful white blossoms up and down the vine. But today, we're going to use the vine as the base of our arrangement. I'm using a zinc container that I placed a plastic liner wet foam. Then I start by placing my vine. Now this one has two stems that have grown together and are intertwined. So I have to give each stem a nice good cut and then make sure that both of them get down into the moisture in the foam so that they'll keep drinking. Then I can bring this around, winding it, laying it across, and then bringing it up and over and back out to secure it in place. Just a simple hairpin wire, folded in half, and then inserted down into the foam. And then maybe a second one, folded in half, placed over here to make sure it stays put. And then deciding, do I want to bring this around even a little further? I can just take it and weave it over on itself, letting it trail outward, or maybe even bringing it on back around weaving it, and then securing it down to the foam so it comes out the opposite side. It's very, very soft and pliable, so you can mold it however you want to to get it to start the base of your arrangement. As you wind the vine, some leaves are going to face forward, and some are going to face backwards. So I'm going to enhance this a little bit by taking bits of another vine and filling in with some that are going to face the opposite direction so that it doesn't give you just the light green color. You get some of the dark green color as well. And it just adds a little bit more enhancement. Then I start with the larger flowers, like the protea and the hydrangea. Give it a cut. They're so woody. Sometimes it's easier just to break and then whittle it a little bit to make sure it's going to drink well. And then setting it down in deeply. Maybe shadowing it with a second one. Finding a little hole, there we go. So I've got two protea and you can see how quickly it starts filling in because the blooms are so big. Then maybe a hydrangea coming down to help break the line of the container in the front. And then a second one, carrying your eye all the way back with that beautiful lime green color. Now coming in with some of the smaller blooms, maybe the ranuncula, letting it come outward, adding a little fullness. Grouping it together, because they're so little. If you separate them, they'll just get lost. 
maybe three of them coming out over here. Find a little hole to weave it in. And then bringing one out to the opposite side, coming out towards the front. And again, grouping them. One last little guy here. Tucking him right down with the others. For the hyacinth, many times they're a little fragile. Their stem doesn't like to go in. So I usually cut them short. And then I use a wood pick right beside, lashing it on. And then I don't need it to be quite so long, cutting that down. But that'll lead the way into the foam. And then I can tuck it. And I'm more concerned with the fragrance than how visible it is. just want to make sure that that wonderful hyacinth fragrance comes out and really goes, oh, it is a bit of paradise. Then coming back with the green trick carnations, maybe tucking it down in front, using it almost like a foliage, filling in. Out towards the back. And then I can't forget our pineapples, little miniatures, grouping them down in front, creating the accent area and even weaving it around that green trick carnation. Maybe one more. They're so special. They really make you think of a little bit of warmth and paradise. Now I just fill in, making sure all my mechanics are covered. Maybe one more of the hyacinth. Again, putting it on a pick. Shortening the pick down and then tucking it around towards the back, finding a hole to feed that down in. There we go. And then bringing in the lisianthus, maybe brightening over on this side, adding a little more color, a little fullness. Grouping the two together and even the bachelor buttons. Tucking them over on this side. Finding a hole for that delicate little stem. They're so little. Just go ahead and group them together. One more Lysianthus in purple. May as well stick it in here, not waste it. And then lovely little bud. So delicate, tucking that down in. And then looking for holes, making sure that all my mechanics are covered. You can't see my foam anywhere by tucking in another of the green trick there. And maybe one more right back here in the back. I'm going to call this arrangement the Anti-Valentine and dedicate it to all of you hardworking florists. I know you're surrounded by red roses right now and you're pulling your hair out because you've never worked so hard in your life, well, since last Valentine's Day. And soon it'll be over. And that's when you'll probably watch this video because you don't have time right now. So this is for you. Think about paradise. Think about springtime and summer and the days to come. You can relax, sit down, have a cup of tea, and once again, smell the flowers and enjoy them. If you're not working in a flower shop, you get a preview of springtime and you might have a little taste of what it's like to be in a flower shop when you hear about how hard they're working. For now, happy Valentine's Day to you all. If you want Valentine's inspiration, go to the website at flowerschool.com. I've got several Valentine's arrangements that you can create. If you don't want Valentine's, this one's for you. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to contact me. You can give us a call at 1-800-819-8089 or feel free to use my email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. For some of you, happy Valentine's Day. It's almost over. 
for others, happy Valentine's Day. Have fun. And for everyone, know that springtime's just around the corner. And it's time to do something you love.